What's going down, you savages? Welcome back to another live stream right here on the channel, right here on Cassius Morris Official. Back by popular demand with the proper streaming setup for Vertical. I had a bunch of people telling me they really like these new portrait streams. They like the energy, they like the vibe. But they said, Cassius, where the fuck is your microphone? Uh, where's your professional gear? We need it back. So I got it back. And uh, this is the first actual vertical stream with uh, the studio setup. So listen, let me know what you guys think so far of the setup. Once you join, just let me know how the sound is and everything like that. But I have a feeling everything is set up and it's going to be good. Going to be a good stream today, man. I was just uh, getting done with the Barbados vlog. So I've been uh, taking a couple days off my reactions. But while I was gone, of course, we have the J. Cole diss firing back at Kendrick Lamar. Uh, we also have Diddy and his son continuing to be investigated by the feds. The feds now pinning Diddy's son um, as one of the aggressors and assaulters in this case. So we're going to break down uh, everything that's happened in that situation as well. But we're just going to kick it off with this J. Cole diss, man. We got the lyrics here of the seven-minute drill, which is, of course, the Cole track that was aimed at Kendrick Lamar. And word has it, by the way, that the reason this is called the seven minute drill is because J. Cole has a drill where he challenges himself to write a uh, verse in seven minutes. So I guess this is basically a warning shot off the top of Cole's head just to sort of warn Kendrick. We're going to break down the disc with the lyrics. And we also uh, have the genius page loaded up just on this side so we can actually break down uh, what each bar is representing and meaning as well. So let's go ahead and hop into this. This is the seven minute drill, the exclusive diss by J. Cole to Kendrick Lamar. Yeah. See what we got. Turn it up. Yeah, turn the vocal up. Uh, light work, like it's PWC. It's a cold world. Keep the heat under your seat. I got a phone call. They say that somebody dissing. You want some attention? It come with extensions. My dog, like, say the word. He on bullshit. He itching. I'm putting so much work in these streets. He got pension. I told him, chill out. How I look having henchmen. If shots get to popping, I'm the one doing the clinching. I okay, so my dog, like, say the word. So this is definitely a Drake reference, right? I mean, when, when we break this down on Genius, my dog, like, say the word. He on bullshit. He itching. So that's definitely got to be a, a reference to On Some Bullshit by Drake, right? It says, this is likely a direct response to how Kendrick threatened Cole by invoking his bodyguards. Cole insists that he too has people that'll kill for him, but he finds it lame to put other bodies in line, other bodies on the line in a conflict centering him. Basically, he's implying that Kendrick is lame for sending threats from behind a bodyguard. Here we go. The use of... My dog may also be a reference to For All the Dogs from 2023, an album by Drake. Now, and obviously they're missing on some bullshit too. Now, now when, when he says my dog on some bullshit, we got to remember in the song On Some BS by Drake on her loss, Drake is speaking on the rumors that he potentially was involved in killing XXX Tentacion. So, you know, that whole song sort of centers around sending hits and, and death and all that stuff. So it's kind of funny that Genius would miss that reference. I came up in a veil, so I'm good when it's tension. He's still doing shows, but fell off like the Simpsons. Your first shit was classic, your last shit was tragic. Your second shit put niggas to sleep, but they gassed it. Your third shit was massive, and that was your prime. I was trailing right behind, and I just now hit mine. Now I'm front up the line with a comfortable lead. How I run it, so I got it. Now he wants something with me. Brutal. So Cole here pointing out the fact. So let, let's just break it down. Let's just break it down one by one. Your first shit was classic. Your last shit was tragic. So I guess he's speaking on Good Kid, Mad City versus Mr. Morale. Now, look, I got to just make it clear right off the bat, guys, too, by the way, that I am a fan of Kendrick Lamar. Like, when it comes to this beef, I'm actually a fan of everybody involved. Kendrick's a great rapper. Cole's a great rapper. Drake's a great rapper. There's, there's really no battle when it comes to the quality of each artist uh, individually. You know, they all have their, their special traits. But I would definitely agree that for an album that took how many years to drop? It took six years to drop from Damn to Mr. Morale or maybe even seven years. For an album we were waiting that long for, I had way higher expectations for Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers. I think that album has some incredible moments on it. 
there are some great moments on Mr. Morale that are definitely memorable. I think Worldwide Steppers is a great song. The first track is pretty good. The song with Kodak is okay. But for an album following Damn that we've waited so many years for, I think Mr. Morale was a total sleeper, dude. Total sleeper, boring, was not up there in the caliber of any record Kendrick has ever dropped. And again, the Kendrick fans are always going to defend it, dude. The Kendrick fans are always going to say it's a great record. They're always going to say you just don't get it. But look, when I'm listening to a rap album, I don't want it to be like I'm taking a fucking college course. You know, I don't want to have to sit there on Genius and read volumes of fucking explanations about a song. For me, a good song should just hit you. I should be able to understand the song when I fucking put it on. So this thing with Kendrick is that he every time he makes a record, these concept albums, it's like a fucking college thesis that you have to go through. Uh... It just doesn't hit the same as, as some songs by Cole or Drake. Now, he says, your second shit put people to sleep, but they gassed it. Of course, speaking on To Pimp a Butterfly, the record. I wouldn't agree with this. You know, I would say To Pimp a Butterfly is definitely a really good album. But again, to really understand the record, you got to do a lot of reading. You got to put a lot of references together. And it's just not necessarily a record that, that connected, I think, with the general listening audience in the same way you know as something like a forest hills drive could or even a good kid mad city could as well uh cole giving credit saying your third shit was massive and that was your prime of course talking about dim i completely agree with cole i must have some pretty good taste because i got flamed on my stream for saying that dim was was the best kendrick record i still stand by that 10 toes down um i'm standing on business with that one man because i do think that was his prime and that was definitely his best record one of the greatest modern hip-hop records of all time. Uh, let's get back into Cole here. So basically, the consensus from Cole, Good Kid, Mad City was a classic. Mr. Morale is trash. To Pimp a Butterfly is mid. And Damn is the GOAT record from Kendrick. I, I, you know what? That's a pretty good fucking take by Cole. I was trailing right behind and I just now hit mine. Now I'm front up the line with a comfortable lead. How I run it, so I got it. Now he wants something with me. Well, he caught me at the perfect time. Jump up and see why I got here off of bars. Not no controversy. Funny thing about it, bitch, I don't even want the prestige. Fuck the Grammys, cause them crackers ain't never done nothing for me. Oh my god, dude. I love this bar. Okay, so check this out. First, the first bar in here is speaking on the fact that Kendrick has been looking for his controversial moment to get back into the spotlight. And Cole is right about this, by the way. When you look at Kendrick Lamar's track record, when you look at Kendrick Lamar's history of, of big moments in this business, Kendrick has had some big moments on his own based off the music, but let's not be confused. The biggest moments in Kendrick Lamar's career have come from beefing with other rappers. The first one was his control moment where he's dissing everybody from Big Sean to Jay Alec to Mac Miller to Drake to Cole. And his second biggest career moment has been this. Guys, if you have another moment that you can challenge this with, that you can tell me, look, tell me, Cassius, you're wrong. In 2012, he did this. It was way bigger. Tell me. But I don't think that's the case. Kendrick Lamar has a funny knack of needing publicity, and he has a funny knack of getting it through beefing with other rappers. This to me on, on the future song like that with Metro Boomin where he dissed the big three, where he dissed Drake and, and Cole, to me was just a desperate sort of grab for attention if you ask me. Again, the biggest moments for Kendrick when he's been looked at in that way has been when he's beefing other rappers. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong. The next bar here, fuck the Grammys because them crackers, they never did nothing for me. It's pretty good too because the, one of the only things Kendrick fans have had recently is saying, well, Mr. Morale can't be that bad of a record because he just won a Grammy. Kendrick just won a Grammy for Mr. Morale. Yet every other year leading up to the Grammys, Kendrick fans are saying how trash the Grammys is, how the Grammys doesn't actually represent what hip-hop listeners think, the Grammys is only a group of, you know, fucking white people in an office that are voting on the best record, and it's not really a representation of the culture. It is pretty ironic how the second your fave wins a Grammy, all of a sudden you support the Grammys. It's like people talk shit about the Grammys. Oh, the Grammys ain't shit. The Grammys are rigged. They're fake. But your favorite rapper wins a Grammy. All of a sudden, oh, well, he won a Grammy. The album must be pretty good. No, no, the Grammys are dog shit. They've been dog shit regardless of who wins. 
Ho, slugs took my nigga's soul, drugs took another one A rap beef ain't realer than the shit I seen in Cumberland He averaging one hard burst like every 30 months or something If he wasn't dissing, then we wouldn't be discussing him Lord, don't make me If he wasn't dissing, then we wouldn't be discussing him Facts! Facts! Months or something. If he wasn't dissing, then we wouldn't be discussing him Lord, don't make me have to smoke this nigga cause I fuck with him But push come to shove on this mic, I will humble him You know what this thing, this that New Jack City meme Yeah, I'm aiming at G-Money crying tears before I busted him Ooh. Light work, like it's PWC It's a cold world, keep the heat under your seat I got a phone call, they say that somebody dissing You want some attention, it come with extensions My dog like say the word, he on bullshit, he itching I'm putting so much work in these streets, he got pension I told him chill out, how I look having henchmen If shots get to popping, I'm the one doing the Conductor, conductor, conductor No! The second you hear conductor, it's over, bro. It's over. Let's go. I got mixed feelings about these fucking rap niggas. It's over for that cap. The official cap pillars two six. We don't act niggas. We get at niggas. Shoot a nigga lights out. Yeah, my dog. Stat filler, stat stuffers, triple double. Get your ass black duffel. Body bag, body bag, body bag. Cold world, you're instructor for Pilates class. Get a nigga stretched if I feel a disrespect. Ooh. Your arms might be too short to box with the God. You live his life without <laughs> the pressures of a constant facade. I pray for peace, but if a nigga. Oh, your arms might be too short to box with a God is crazy. You know that would hurt Kendrick. That would hit Kendrick right here, bro. T-Rex looking ass like bro That one hit you know that one hit Your arms are too short to box With a god bro Nigga stretched if I feel a disrespect Your arms might be too short to box With a god who live his life without The pressures of a constant facade I pray for peace but if a nigga sees these Positive vibes a falcon nine inside my Pocket bitch this rocket gon fly Now it's popping outside like the top Of July my text flooded with the Hunger for a toxic reply I'm hesitant I love my brother but I'm not gonna lie. I'm powered up for real. That shit would feel like swatting a fly. Ooh. Come here, Kendrick. Bitch. It's cold world. It's like swatting a fly, boy. Four albums in 12 years, nigga. I can divide. Shit, if this is what you want, I'm indulging in violence. Put pictures in my home. Ain't the chrome at your eyelids. Fly pebbles at your dome. We the Stone Temple pilots. This is merely a warning shot. The back niggas down. Back in the town where they whipping work and traffic and pounds. My jack jumping about a rapper making blasts from his sounds. Switching sides like the tassel on the cap and a gown. I'm fully loaded, nigga. I can drop two classics right now. <laughs> Let me chill out, bro. bro. Fall off on the way, nigga. Crazy. The warning shot, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get a round of applause for J. Cole. Up in this motherfucker. Cole World. The warning shot. Now, the second I, I heard that conductor beat, guys, I knew I knew this shit was over, bro. Conductor going crazy. Absolutely crazy. Dominating the game. So, look, man. At the end of the day, I, I like this disc because... You know, here's the thing. A lot of people were saying that they were hoping for the most bloodthirsty, nastiest diss comeback in the world from J. Cole to Kendrick. Here's the thing, though. You're not going to bring a flamethrower to a fucking, you know, fist fight. At the end of the day, Kendrick, when he came out on like that, I honestly found the diss was pretty mid. Um, like, if this was any other rapper that didn't have fans who were such dick riders, and I got to say this completely honestly... If this was any other rapper, this disc would just be called mid. But just the fact that Kendrick is even bringing up these guys in any sense is so exciting to people that they're like, oh, this is fire. J. Cole and Drake just got owned. They just got slammed. They really didn't. The disc was mid. What did Kendrick say? Fuck the big three? Okay. Ooh, oh, super hot fuck. Who gives a fuck? Fuck the big three? Okay. What did he say? For something about a pet cemetery. So. Honestly, dude, like that was the weakest diss I've fucking ever heard from any rapper, period. That was the weakest diss track ever. Fuck the big three in a pet cemetery? Who gives a fuck? This diss was actually pointed. Um, it addressed, you know, the guy's flaws more. Look, the one thing about Kendrick is that he's dissing guys who he can't name what the problem is. He's dissing two incredible rappers at the top of their game. Like, bro, if I was going to go against anybody in the rap game in 2024 as another big rapper, 
The last guys I would pick are Drake and J. Cole. Just in the same sense that in my space as a podcaster, if I'm going to go against anybody, whether I have 50,000 subscribers like I do now, or whether I have 100,000 subscribers, or sorry, 100 fucking million subscribers, I'm still not going to go after Joe Rogan, because guess what? You don't go after the goat of any given space. And even if I'm a streamer with, let's say I have 50 million subs, I'm still not Joe Rogan. So if I was to go at Joe Rogan again, whether I have 50K or 50 mil, you're still not that guy. Kendrick is one of those guys. But if I was Kendrick, I would just be secure in being one of those guys. Why do you have to challenge the other guys who are doing better than you? Because again, in the diss track by Kendrick, he can't say that J. Cole makes bad music. He can't say that Drake makes bad music. He can't say they aren't doing numbers. He can't say they aren't talented. I don't understand what his problem is, to be honest, because he's not naming any complaints. J. Cole in this track, he points out the fact that Kendrick has a lack of consistency in his music, which for me is one of the reasons I have sort of lost respect for Kendrick as an artist because he wants to be seen as one of the gods in this space. He wants to be seen as one of the arbiters of hip hop and you know one of the authorities in this space, but he never wants to drop music. You know, to me, you are not one of the kings of any given space if you don't, if you're not active in that space. The other thing about Kendrick too, that has been brought up in you know many different streams since this happened is that Kendrick is out for himself in this game. Guys like J. Cole and guys like Drake have given opportunities to countless rappers. They put on countless rappers. You look at the careers of guys like Lil Baby, Gunna, Lil Durk, 21 Savage. A guy like Drake has changed those guys' lives by bringing them into the mainstream. Not only that, but he's done that for the UK. He's brought rappers from all over the UK into the American and Canadian scene. He's brought guys like Popcan from, you know, Jamaica. He's brought artists from all over the world into the forefront, giving them a chance to get on a song and really put them out there and help push them. J. Cole does the same thing with Dreamville. He does whole tapes with, you know, artists from Dreamville. He's put up Earth Gang. He's put up Loot. He's put up Boss. These guys are doing shit for the community, bro. They're giving back. They're giving back, not only to the artists, but they're giving back to the fans. Drake's out here giving away money at his concerts. Kendrick Lamar could never. Kendrick Lamar could never, bro. Kendrick doesn't give a fuck about anybody but Kendrick Lamar and his cousin, Baby Keem. That's the only guy this dude has put on in the past 20 fucking years is Baby Keem, his fucking cousin. So if you're going to give back to your cousin... And if you're going to fucking shut out everybody else and you're going to act like you're a god on the earth walking around with a fucking attitude and you're 5'5", I'm turned off, bro. I'm turned off. You know, I saw Kendrick live recently. I saw him uh, at a concert at a festival. And I could feel the arrogance from the stage. I could feel him looking down on everybody. I could feel him feeling above us. I don't like this guy's fucking attitude, bro. Especially when, again, you're not dropping good music, bro. You're not dropping music... It takes you years to drop a fucking mid-album and you're walking around like you're hot shit? Get the fuck out of here, dog. It's fucking ridiculous. So yeah, it gets annoying after a while, but again, I, I think that the lack of consistency in Kendrick's career is is really something that needs to be noted. Um, just like Cole said, he's aver he, he averages one hot verse like every 30 months or something. If he wasn't dissing, then we wouldn't be discussing him. These are, these are the absolute facts. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments, man, about the Kendrick Lamar versus J. Cole beef versus Drake, I guess, as well. Who do you think is winning? Make sure to hit that like button, by the way, guys, if you're watching the stream. I have no idea who's watching, but uh, smash that like button. We're going to pop into the chat as well. Shout out to No Scope. Shout out to uh, Did Ascension 13. Shout out to Kyle, TFT, Third Stooge. All in the, the YouTube chat, man. Definitely a good diss track, though, bro. I give it a solid reaction. I'll, I'll probably give it like... I'll give it an 8.5 out of 10. I feel like it was a good diss. Um, and definitely curious to see if Kendrick is going to respond to this diss. Uh, I have a feeling Drake is not going to respond to this diss. And honestly, dude, I think that's a really good move. Listen, if I was Drake at this stage in his career, guys, I would not respond to anything. This man has broken every record. He shattered every, you know, he shattered every statistic possible in this game. 
I don't think there needs to be any justification for anything. Like, if I was a guy like that, I wouldn't justify myself for a thing. I would let everybody say whatever they want, and I would enjoy my money. That's what I would do if I was Drake, and I think that's a really good move. This man just finished an 87-night sold-out tour. I wouldn't give a fuck what anybody's saying. Like, do you think he gives a fuck what you're saying? Do you think he cares? Again, I wouldn't care. So I think, it, you know, the best move... If you're fucking Drake in 2024, dude, just enjoy being Drake in 2024 because you're the biggest artist on the fucking planet. Kendrick is trash, overrated, overhyped. I don't think Kendrick is trash, bro, but I do think he's overrated and overhyped. Like, Kendrick has, has had some incredible moments in this space, but again, is Mike Tyson still the goat of boxing because he had, you know, great fights in the 80s? Some would say yes, but others would say no. There's new guys, you know, out here in the game that are pushing it forward. Um, you know, Kendrick wins off nostalgia, bro. That's ultimately where he gets people. He wins off nostalgia. A lot of the music that Kendrick made was made when guys like me were in high school and guys in our age range were in high school, right? So that nostalgia... I think wins people over, but he's not pushing the, the, the space forward right now at all. Cole is a goat. Totally bro. J Cole minds his business and sticks to the music. Exactly, dude. Exactly. Okay. Let's see what else we can put up, pull up. Um, I'm going to try to take a look at just some stuff about the beef. See if there's a video. Make sure to hit that like button guys. By the way, we're talking about J Cole dissing Kendrick Lamar uh, in a response. 40 minute video is crazy. I just want to see like a short little, well, we'll look at like two minutes of it then. The unspoken beef between Cole and Kendrick. Uh, this video is coming from What's the Dirt on YouTube. Full credit to them. We're going to do a little reaction. Kendrick Lamar and J. Cole have been at the top of the food chain for a very long time, and even in 2024, the battle for that number one spot is still very much alive. Now, you guys really loved my video where I broke down all the Kendrick and Drake disses, but something that gets overlooked is the ongoing and current back and forth between J. Cole and Kendrick. So that's what this video is about. Now, keep in mind, some of these bars are speculation, but some of them are pretty obvious. All right, so J. Cole and Kendrick's relationship goes way back to before they even released their freshman albums. Now, J. Cole did have a head start as he signed with Hove in 2009, and when he signed to The Rock, he dropped two amazing mixtapes. I was definitely a massive fan of both of those tapes. In fact, the out girl loves it. And then the other one that I like is Brioni. It's more of a citrus. Okay, my guy's doing ads and shit. Let's just get to the beef. Months later, he completely shook the industry when he dropped his control verse. We usually own boys with the same niggas I'm rhyming with, but this is hip hop and them niggas. The last time he was relevant, by the way, dissing other people again. You know what time it is, and that goes for Jamaica, be quick, my lay. On the verse, Kendrick calls out multiple rappers, which triggered responses mostly from MCs that weren't even named. But one rapper that was named and did respond was J. Cole. Thought you was a down ass bitch till I found that shit a couple days ago. I was home alone. Next thing I know, that long ass verse from a song called Control was on. In the verse, J. Cole paints the picture of a girl playing the control verse that he was close with. This is likely in reference to the big splash that the verse made, given the fact that the whole world talked about it at the time. That's when I seen the shit playing on your phone. Girl, what is that? A ringtone? Shit, not you too. Man, I hate them, got you too. Cole then has See, Cole responds in the most creative way, though, bro. Like, Cole will respond in such a creative way that it's like, why did I even diss this guy? Like, and, and that's the thing about these rappers. I know that they have enough respect for the art form where, where like, Kendrick would hear this and be like, fuck, I wish I would have come up with that. Like, that's smart. You know, Cole's a creative guy, man. That's why, again, just like we're seeing in the chat, this is a guy who minds his fucking business. I don't know why people are at this guy. But it, it's kind of like in an argument, like when somebody, let's say you're in an argument with somebody in person and somebody's yelling at you, they get more angry when, if you're just smiling and not yelling, right? Like they're going to get mad that you're not getting mad. And that to me is what happens with Cole and that happens with Drake as well. People are mad that they're just winning and they're not reacting, bro. 
Muslim said, remember what beef did for hip hop in the 90s? It got people killed. So it's sad that the animosity still fuels sales. Bad news or gossip always drives sales and likes. Muslim Brody, I completely agree, brother, in the chat. It's it's a it is a big shame. And again, like even the fact that they're like J. Cole's talk I was gonna say this too earlier, but I, I it slipped my mind. The fact that J. Cole's talking about getting Kendrick hit and body bags and like sending a shooter for Kendrick is actually whack as fuck. Like, bro, you're writing poems to each other. You're gonna get a guy clipped over a poem. Like, I, I don't even think that would be allowed. Like, you know, if, if you're like, if you watch a mafia movie, you can't get a guy clipped just for nothing. I, I don't even think that would fly. So it is corny to me to talk about killing a guy over a fucking poem, bro. Like, you guys are all too rich and too blessed and too fucking spoiled to be sitting around complaining like this and bitching and going back and forth. You know those millions in your bank account? How about you go spend some? Go spend some of it. You're rich. Act like it. Act like it. Don't act like a fucking child. The conversation with the girl alluding to how the hype sucked her in. People like Drake would make similar remarks about the verse, saying that it was just for shock value and that it would be forgettable. Everybody and their mama gas, even my mama ass when I'm a joke. Again, Cole makes mention to how everyone gassed up the control verse and makes it known that people that he was close with questioned him on how he would respond to it. Decisions, decisions. In case this is warning, I load up on all ammunition. Again, Cole echoes. Bro, why was he going so hard on a Justin Timberlake song, by the way? I've never heard that Cole song. How everyone gassed. Looks like a Justin Timberlake remix. Up the control verse and makes it known that people that he was close with question him on how he would respond to it. Decisions, decisions. In case this is warning, I load up on all ammunition. Again, Cole echoes a similar response to Drake, where Drake said that if it's really beef, then let it be real. So it's like, was that real or was that just like for the people? You know what no, I mean? I like, think it's a sparring kind of sport. Yeah, but you know, at the that. same time, it's like, you know, then let it be real then, you know, I mean, because those were harsh words. Right? If a nigga won't promise my triggers on auto, I'll make sure that nobody miss him. So Cole is really letting Kendrick know that if he wants to make this. But Cole's never killed anybody, though. Like, bro, Cole has been talking about shooting people since 2010. Who was J. Cole shot, though? Like, that's that's corny to me, dude. That's actually corny to me. Being real, if he wants to take it there, that he's ready for war. Like, take it where, bro? He just said he's a better rapper than you. That's how he's supposed to feel. I understand responding, but like to talk like you're going to end a man's life for, for rapping is insane. The last line where he states that he's going to make sure that nobody misses him appears to be a direct response to Kendrick's verse when he said this. I got love for you all, but I'm trying to murder you niggas. Trying to make sure your core fans never heard of you niggas. They don't want to hear not one more noun or verb from you. Okay, so he was asking for it. Let's be real. He, I guess he was asking for it. So J. Cole is saying, I can make you disappear. It's critical to note that when the control verse dropped, Cole felt obligated to reach out to Kendrick directly to try to make sense of what it was all about. I had to have a conversation with him. Tell, I just had to find out for myself, like, yo, what? You came at me, dog? What's that? And Kendrick did explain on many occasions that his relationship with J. Cole did not change as a result of that verse. Specifically, where are you at, like, with the J. Cole? Specifically, where are you at with a Drake or so on and so forth? I respect the music. I like that. For sure. I respect them uh, as individuals and creators. And Kendrick seemingly wasn't lying as some months after the control verse, P. Diddy allegedly tried to pour a- Oh no! What the fuck? Diddy has entered the chat? What did Diddy do now? Why is this motherfucker involved with every bad situation in the world, bro? Is there one bad thing that's ever happened in hip-hop that Diddy is not involved? As individuals and creators. And Kendrick seemingly wasn't lying as some months after the control verse, P. Diddy allegedly tried to pour a drink on Kendrick at a party. Diddy was in a drunken state and was pissed <laughs> off about Kendrick's King of New York line and J. Cole defended him. It was Cole's intervention that led to the infamous scuffle between himself and Diddy. I mean, anyone oh, out here- Oh, okay, okay. So if anybody doesn't remember, there was a fight between Diddy and J. Cole and I guess- So look, here's the confusing part for me as we put the dots together. So here they're saying that Diddy and J. Cole got in a beef, which ended up becoming a thing for J. Cole, over him, over J. Cole protecting Kendrick. So that's the first thing. J. Cole protected Kendrick from Diddy and got himself in a beef. The second thing that's confusing is, we're gonna, we could pull up the clip, 
word is that J. Cole actually got Kendrick discovered by Dr. Dre. If you look at the clip on, you know, from J. Cole in the interview with Nardwar, shout out to Nardwar, he says that he's the one who actually got Kendrick discovered. So that's sort of why I scratch my head as well. If J. Cole has been so cool to Kendrick, you know, if this is actually the truth, why would Kendrick be sending shots at Cole all the time? If this is a guy that basically made his career. Getting in a fight with J. Cole of all people, you're clearly just a massive piece of shit. Let's just call for what it is. <laughs> At first even led to the fight with Puff and Cole. J. Cole would mention the fight years later on a track called Let Go of My Hand. My last scrap was with Puff Daddy. Who, who would have thought, thought it? As far as award shows for the year, Kendrick cleaned up with BET, winning lyricists of the year, MVP of the year, and album of the year all over J. Cole. Kendrick also clinched the number one spot for MTV's hottest MC, and J. Cole didn't even make the list. With MTV, man, because you did not make the freshman. Oh, man, or not on. the freshman list, but the hottest MC. Right, list. right. Inexcusable. It man. is inexcusable, <laughs> man. I'm like, this dude's got a gold album. Word, like, what do you Platinum doing? single, gold album, Grammy nominated, you know. You gotta kind of be like, come on, son, like, word. Yeah, it was. It just let me know, like, what that whole thing was. And I normally take these lists with a huge grain of salt, but I, I do think it's important to highlight just how many times Kendrick has won over J. Cole, because I feel like that feeds into the chip that's on J. Cole's shoulder in recent years. To further confirm that the two were still on good terms, they celebrated Cole's birthday in New York together, and some months later, J. Cole- Kendrick was fucking faded in that picture, bro. Celebrated Cole's birthday in New York. Holy fuck, that's back when Kendrick was drinking. New York together, and some months later, J. Cole brought Kendrick on stage while he was on tour in L.A. <laughs> However, it was in that same year that J. Cole would release what many people would consider to be his classic album, and on that project, he had a few little jabs for Kendrick. I don't play no games, boy, I ain't no joke, like the great Rock Kim when I make my notes. So it's kind of similar to Kendrick's. Hold on, play the rest, bro. Control verse. You might be L, or you might be K, might be Slick Wick. There we go. Where Cole is paying homage to a bunch of legends, and he's putting himself in the mix. Or you might be Drizzy Drake or Kendrick Lamar. But check the birth date, nigga. You ain't the guy. Bro, that line just gives me chills today, dude. That line gives me chills. The fact that he actually named Drake and Kendrick in that line. This is 10 years later, guys. These are still the big three. Like the foreshadowing of this is crazy because I feel like Cole knew, like, look, when you're in a space like this and you're that hungry, I feel like you know who else is that hungry too. You know, you can, like when you have that level of drive and hunger, I think you can identify the other people who are actually gonna be competition for you, who are actually gonna be a problem because there's very few of them, right? So these are still the same three guys that we're still talking about a decade later. Yeah, shout out to Rakim as well. A decade later, though, it's crazy. Guy, this line acts as a double entendre where one, Cole inserts himself as being above both Kendrick and Drake, and two, Rakim commonly goes by the God MC, and Cole just so happens to share the same birthday, January 28th. Oh, wow. So at this point, I didn't realize that. Just all friendly competition in the spirit of hip hop, but it was the control verse that triggered this type of competition. Jay Insanity, bro. Beef going all the way back. Now, we're, we're going to fast forward here just to the end so we can see how this actually ended up evolving. This was a fucking decade ago, so that's just a little bit of history on this beef and, and really why it's happening. So now we're going to fast forward to uh, the start of this beef in modern times, recent times, which was, of course, Drake on uh, For All the Dogs with the song First Person Shooter. We're going to get into that. Uh, so let's take a look at this here. Make sure to subscribe, by the way, if you guys are enjoying. Make sure to like the stream. I appreciate everybody watching, bro. Let me know who you got as the GOAT. Kendrick, Cole, or Drake? Who do you think is the best of the big three? And uh, who do you think is winning this beef so far, bro? Drop me a comment down below. Rappers, should they okay, I guess? So again, J. Cole is not looking at any of these other rappers as a threat. But most importantly, he doesn't look at Kendrick as a threat. 
coming on your top five tonight. And now for the most damning piece of all, first person shooter. A lot of niggas debating my numero, not the three, not the two on the UNO. So right off rip, J. Cole makes it clear on Drake's own record that he's number one. Numero, you I love how Drake just lets us slide, by the way. Drake's like, meh. Fuck it, dude. He's like, if somebody's gonna say they're they're better than me, it might as well be J. Cole. Now, when J. Cole refers to himself and Drake as being the Super Bowl, what two teams make it to the Super Bowl? The two best teams. By inserting himself and Drake as being the best, J. Cole is essentially omitting Kendrick from the equation entirely. Like a kid that had bad from January to November, nigga, it's just you and Cole. Again, Drake supports Cole's previous Super Bowl analogy by stating that it's just him and Cole in the running. I'm naming the album to fall off, it's pretty ironic cause it ain't no fall off for me. And now we get back to Kendrick's line on Count Me Out with his reference, nobody but the mirror looking for the fall off. And Cole makes it clear that there's no falling off for him. Love when they argue the hardest MC. Is it K Dot? Is it Aubrey or me? Okay, so he mentions Kendrick and Drake, but. We the big three like we started a lead, but right now I feel like Muhammad Ali. So this is very much a backhanded compliment. Bro, I love this beef so much. I love this beef so much, bro. This is like the this is like the hip hop Avengers right now. Himself, Muhammad Ali. Now, who's Muhammad Ali? Just think about that. The Spider Man meme is me looking at Drake. Again, as they continue to remove Kendrick from the equation, they need to be prepared for what's to come. <laughs> and I can almost guarantee that Kendrick will. They didn't take him out of the equation though. They said, "Is it K Dot? Is it R B or me?" Let me add this too. I would not be surprised if they actually offered Kendrick to be on this song, guys. I would bet you any fucking amount of money that they tried to get Kendrick on First Person Shooter as well. Because this song would have made a lot more sense as the three of these guys being on the track. Um, you know, it would have been really cool. The other thing I got to throw in here too is that, you know, some people might be wondering why is Drake letting J. Cole continue to say that he's the greatest rapper? Drake even calling Cole like one of the greatest to ever touch the microphone on stage. Well, we got to think about it in these terms. Just imagine how bad this beef would be for Drake if he didn't have J. Cole on his side. I think Drake is doing, you know, Drake is faring actually quite well in this beef due to the fact that he's aligned with J. Cole. But if it was Kendrick and Cole versus Drake, and I'm a big fan, but he would be in big fucking trouble. I mean, he would be toast. It, it would not be looking good for Drake if it was Kendrick and Cole against him. So I think the smartest thing Drake is doing right now is keeping J. Cole right here, whether they're friends or not, it's probably better even if they're enemies to have him closer, you know, to have him that close because it's going to keep him safer in this beef. <laughs> and honestly, he's the only one who's responded as well. So it's it's one of those things. I think this is the smartest thing Drake could do right now is keep J. Cole right fucking here to save his ass right now. Not that he couldn't handle it, but having one of the best rappers in the world dissing the guy you don't like definitely helps. He'll have some form of response to this record guaranteed everybody step as we're fucking it everybody breakfast and i'm about to clear up my plate i mean at this point i don't think j cole can make it any more obvious who he's talking about when it comes to his collaboration records with drake there's an ongoing theme in their music that people seem to overlook and their track evil ways is another example of just that high up in arenas where they see they faves aka me and drizzy drake we the wave Again, Cole is positioning himself and Drake as being the top two. So if you're Kendrick Lamar, how are you to perceive this? When two of the artists that you've been up against since the beginning of your career are making these style of records. Then when we look at the reality of the situation, which is the fact that Kendrick does not like Drake, how do you expect him to respond? Like I said, I mean, like I'll put my entire fucking YouTube channel on the line here. Like Kendrick will have a response to these records. I stay out of beef, see niggas DNA get rearranged. J. Cole continues to bait Kendrick with the line, see dude's DNA. He definitely did beef, I mean, bait him a lot. I'm, I'm starting to see it now. You know, before really examining this, I kind of felt like this beef was unprovoked, but especially if you're a rapper and you can pick up all these little subs, man, I definitely see why Kendrick would at least want to respond a little bit. 
it get rearranged, which would be a reference to Kendrick's track DNA. We can't. In the chat, it says, I don't see Drake as someone deemed worthy of the hip hop legend Pantheon. Drake is definitely successful at R&B and hip hop, but not a rapper. Respectfully, bro, anybody who says that is just, that's a clear sign of somebody who doesn't know Drake's music. Uh, anybody who knows Drake's music would never say that. So I would just encourage you to check out more of it. Uh, just because that R&B and, and pop songs are his biggest songs that you hear on the radio, what you hear on the radio is not a representation of his actual discography. Uh, this dude has songs where he spits for like seven minutes straight. Uh, he's written some incredible bars. So I really, I don't think somebody who, who knows his music would really say that, honestly. Continue to just ignore this. Like it's not happening. I mean, there is many signs. However, J. Cole wasn't done and even had more subliminals for Kendrick on his recent release, Might Delete Later. Niggas swear they compare, but the truth humble. They get fuck 112, you couldn't do numbers. In the first line, Cole referenced- Yeah, this guy predicted the, the diss too. This is funny. I was waiting for, for the Kendrick diss to be covered, but yeah, this dude, this dude, man, talk about good timing for a video. Is how he's often <laughs> compared with someone and that someone would evidently be Kendrick with the use of the word humble. Oh, bitch, be humble. Holla, bitch, this song is ass, by the way. I have always thought humble is fucking trash, dude. I do not know how that's a hit song. That's one of the worst hip hop singles I've ever heard in my life is humble. Down. Syrup sandwiches, bro. Really? Syrup? Get the fuck out of here, dog. In the second line, Cole says you couldn't do numbers, which is in reference to Kendrick's last project, where many considered it to be a flop, given the fact that it was his lowest selling album in the last 10 years. I'm the one that niggas fear on the low ski. In the first line, J. Cole makes it clear that certain rappers are afraid of him on the low. This ties perfectly into what Joe Budden said about Kendrick Lamar. Kendrick talking shit to anybody in the world but a nigga named Jermaine. <laughs> Heard them talking like we peers, but they grossly mistaken in this play tick. In the second line, Cole points out directly that people think he's friends with Kendrick, but that it's blatantly obvious this is not the case. The reality of the situation is the two have not been seen in the same room together in six, seven years. Zero collaborations have happened, zero support for one another's projects, and they don't even follow each other on social media. Well, that doesn't mean anything, first of all. It doesn't matter if they follow each other on social media because social media isn't real. We got to remember, too, these are two rappers, guys, who don't use social media. Like, J. Cole, you know, he, he'll post an album when he drops it. This dude doesn't give a fuck about social media. Kendrick, he has a social account probably just to claim the name so that nobody else takes at Kendrick Lamar. So there you go, guys. A little bit of a breakdown on the Cole versus Kendrick beef. Let me know what you guys think, man down below we're gonna move on to diddy uh there's some new information here about p diddy and uh it is not looking good for the former hip-hop mogul i'm gonna start saying former because i believe he's now Rapper disgraced is named in a uh let, let's see what's what's going on here with the new latest lawsuit naming his son as an aggressor as well Rapper Diddy is named in another civil lawsuit, but this time it is his son that is the main defendant. A woman accuses Christian King Combs of sexually assaulting her on a yacht. We are going to break down this latest legal action as Sean Combs remains embroiled in an apparent sex trafficking investigation. Welcome to Sidebar, presented by Law & Crime. I'm Jesse Weber. Yeah, no, I get it, bro. You're, you're more old school in the chat, Brody, and I get that. Um... Yeah, Drake does, definitely doesn't have a reputation like Nas, but I don't think he should have a reputation like Nas. He's new breed hip-hop. But look, I, I all I'll say is this. There's a narrative that Drake is soft. He's not a rapper, ba ba ba. If that was the case, you know, if that was the case, if he's soft and he can't rap, why can he hold his own on songs with everybody from Jay-Z to Eminem to Lil Wayne to Kanye West to Birdman to Young Thug to Travis Scott to 21 Savage? If he can't rap... Why do all these rappers enlist him to rap for them? And why do all these rappers think he's good at rapping? That's really the question I ask anybody. It's, it's like the narrative doesn't hold up to the facts. If a guy can't rap, why is he on songs with the greatest rappers of all time? Rapping. It, I, I just, it doesn't make sense. 
We told you just the other day, right here on Sidebar, that the attorney who filed one of these bombshell lawsuits against Sean Diddy Combs on behalf of his client, a former Diddy producer named Rodney Jones, would likely be filing another suit against Combs' son, Christian, and that has just happened. Yes, in fact, the yacht incident, which we're going to get into, was mentioned in Jones's lawsuit against Diddy, with Jones claiming in the complaint that he had personal knowledge that Christian drugged and sexually assaulted a woman. And a footnote was included that a complaint would be forthcoming. Now, at the time, I was wondering if Jones would be the one suing Christian. After all, he already sued Christian's brother and Diddy's other son, Justin. But I was struggling to figure out what would be his cause of action against Christian. Well, it turns out that Jones is not suing Christian. It is actually the woman who was allegedly assaulted by Christian, and she is being repped by Jones's lawyer. I will explain. So first, this development comes almost two weeks after Diddy's homes in Miami and Los Angeles were raided by Homeland Security investigators. It's part of a sweeping sex trafficking investigation by the Southern District of New York, or at least that's what it's being reported. That's what sources from law enforcement are indicating. Now, Diddy's two sons, Justin and Christian, they were seen in handcuffs outside of that L.A. home during the raid. They weren't under arrest. They were merely detained while officers were assessing the situation and going into the home. But Diddy, Justin, and Christian, they have all been named in these very big lawsuits. But remember, that is civil. That is the civil arena. None of them have been arrested or charged with any crime related to this apparent criminal investigation. But our analysts here on Sidebar expect that at least one arrest will be coming soon. But now we fast forward to Thursday, when attorney Tyrone Blackburn, the man already representing Rodney Jones, filed a civil complaint on behalf of his client, Grace O'Markey. I apologize if I'm mispronouncing her last name, but I believe it is O'Markey. Grace O'Markey in Los Angeles Superior Court, accusing 26-year-old Christian Combs of drugging her and sexually assaulting her in December of 2022. Oh boy, like father, like son. That apple is still attached to the tree. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a fucking disgrace. Working in a charter boat in St. Martin. So according to the lawsuit, O'Markey says that she had been working as a steward providing food and drinks on that yacht for a 12-hour period, and she was 25 years old at the time. She believed that the trip would be a, quote, wholesome family excursion, but says it, quote, turned into a hedonistic environment. Who, first of all, that's who goes to Diddy's house thinking it's a wholesome family excursion? That, that's, I'm calling Cap right there. You go to Diddy's house to fucking get drunk and fuck and go crazy, bro. Like, let's be real. Has Diddy ever had the rep representation or the reputation, excuse me. Has Diddy ever had the reputation of a family-friendly person? Like, Diddy does cameos in movies. He's drunk as fuck. You know, I, th I think we know what the deal is with Diddy. Ironman, even describing rampant drug use among sex workers and celebrities who came on board. She believes that the alcohol on the yacht had been laced with drugs because she says women would have one drink and then almost immediately pass out or start falling over. Oh, is Jesus Christ. So they spiked the punch at the party and they just said, drink this. We're, we're going to drink our deli on right out of the bottle. You girls drink out of that punch. And then they started noticing all the girls are fucked up. That's fucking sickening. Immediately pass out or start falling over. This is, by the way, something that it was also alleged in Jones's lawsuit that uh, Combs would spike the drinks of different people. But focusing on Christian Combs, Omarki says that Christian Combs had been staying at a villa on the shore, but that he would come onto the yacht in the evening to party. And on December 28, 2022, Christian reportedly arrived very intoxicated and then proceeded to pressure Omarki to take shots of tequila. She did. Christian allegedly tried to get her to drink more in the yacht's makeshift studio. Omarki alleges that Christian kissed her neck, kissed her face, as he groped her legs, breasts, and private areas. Omarki reportedly told Christian, quote, Excuse me, you don't touch my legs like that. I'll move my legs where I want to. If I want to do this, then I will. You don't touch my legs like that. Omarki then says that she told Christian she couldn't stay with him unless it was approved by a supervisor, all of whom she knew would be asleep at the time. So this was a way for her to get out of the situation. A supervisor? What does that mean, a supervisor? They lost me there. She claims that Christian said, 
who can I talk to? I'm going to say I requested you right now. Well, Marky then says she responded with, quote, well, you can take your hand off my ass for the first thing. Well, Marky says that she tried to go back to her work, but Christian... That's his girlfriend, by the way. All these girls, total, just complete sex workers, by the way. Absolutely sickening. And, and nobody ever deserves to be assaulted, no matter what you are. But I think all the females, frankly, involved are just as disgusting as the guys. These, these are fucking a bunch of degenerate motherfuckers, man. Bunch of degenerates engaging in degeneracy, and look what happens. This is what happens when you act like a fucking animal. You want to act like an animal? You want to party, do drugs, drink on a fucking yacht with strangers, acting like a fucking fool? Look what the fuck happens, man. Wanted her to find him a place to sleep for the night. So she ended up taking him to the cinema room for the yacht, which doubled as a place for people to sleep. And she claims that is when Christian blocked her and groped her, took off his clothes, tried to force her to perform oral sex on him. She says that she was able to fight him off until someone came in. Now, the lawsuit goes on to say that Omarki told the yacht captain what happened the very next day, but he didn't believe her, didn't. Didn't believe her, buddy. He's getting paid. Of course he believed her. You know how much money they're paying this fucking guy to keep quiet? His hiring package, you know, his hiring package came with a fucking blindfold. Do any sort of real investigation. She says the captain retaliated against her for months after the alleged assault before ultimately firing her in May of 2023. Now, aside from her account, aside from a potential other witness, right, the person that allegedly walked in on this, what proof is there that this happened? Well. She reportedly has photos of the bruises that she says were caused by this event with Christian Combs. But she also claims that in that studio, during that first interaction at the time, was Rodney Jones, that former Diddy music producer I mentioned, the one who is suing Diddy. He's known as Little Rod Jones. Remember, he had been basically living with Diddy while the two worked on his latest album, as we discussed on previous sidebars. Jones made multiple allegations against Diddy in his own lawsuit, saying that there was rampant drinking, drug use, sexual assault during Diddy's parties. He claims that he was groped by Diddy, that Whoa. he was the victim of sex trafficking as he was forced to engage in sex acts with sex workers. Whoa. He even claims that Diddy groomed him for homosexual sex and facilitated for him to be sexually abused. Is that Cuba Gooding Jr.? <laughs> what the hell? Is that him or am I tripping? It looks just like him. But I shouldn't say that if, it, if it's not true. I did hear that Cuba was involved, though. Used by actor Cuba Gooding Jr. Oh, shit! And, and we've heard how many things about that guy. He also claims that there are hours of audio and video footage documenting Diddy's alleged crimes and misconduct. And according to Miss O'Markey, Jones taped... This event with her. Yes. The lawsuit provides transcripts of audio recordings. And these audio recordings purportedly show, or you can hear, kissing sounds. Her telling Combs not to touch her. Oh, my Her allegedly God. asking about whether she was drugged. Now, we haven't heard these tapes here on Law and Crime yet. But nah, he's cooked, bro. Listen, if there's audio tapes of all this, and, and look, we got to remember... This is the reason why they take your phone at these parties, bro. For anybody who's familiar with these types of events or parties or, or knows about the whole groupie scene or whatever, I've been in the business long enough to where I know how it works. The second you walk in the door, they'll take a girl's phone. Why do you think they take your phone? That should be the first red flag. If you're going to an event, a private event with, with nobody on the outside who knows what's happening, and they need to confiscate your only link to the outside world, the only piece of technology or the only thing that could actually help you gather evidence against them, maybe help you you know, have evidence for a testimony, something to play in court, a way to reach somebody from the outside. If they're taking your phone, that should be the first red flag. you know. But it doesn't sound like they were thorough enough about taking the phones. And I'm glad they weren't because now we have actual evidence about this. But, you know, I've heard and I'm not going to name names of artists, but I've definitely heard stories from females that I've encountered through the years in this business who have been brought back, whether they're picked out like we're seeing in the, in the chat. You know, they're often picked out from the crowd. 
uh, or whatever and brought back to these strange rooms or these strange houses or parties and the first thing they do is they confiscate their phones because they don't want them having a tape like this. They don't want them having the audio saying, please stop. They don't want them calling somebody for help. And honestly, it's kind of twisted in a way. It's kind of twisted in a way. I'll also throw this in there. I have no issue with people having consensual relations at all. Um, if you're a girl in the crowd at a concert for a rapper and the rapper's manager comes and says, hey, you want to come backstage or come party? And you consensually party, you want to consensually go backstage? And even if you consensually want to have relations with that person, I don't care. Like, I'm not against people having fun. I'm not against people hooking up or even one night stands, whatever. I don't really care about that. If it's consensual. My whole thing that I'm still trying to understand is why is Diddy and his son and all these fucking people, why are they so hell-bent on doing it non-consensually? I still can't understand that. When you can consensually have women, why do you want to drug women? You know, again, you should never want to do it or never do it at all. But especially when, you know, it's like if you have an unlimited buffet in your house and you're outside at the grocery store stealing a, a rotisserie chicken. Why are you stealing chicken if you have food? You got a whole buffet at the house. That's what I'm trying to say. It, it, just, it, it just goes to show the sick and twisted mentality of these guys. They're extra sick and twisted. And again, it's never okay in any circumstance, period. There's no scenario where it's okay to assault somebody, period. But it just goes to show how twisted they are. Just like Bill Cosby, just like Harvey Weinstein, well, Harvey and Weinstein probably, different scenario. But seriously, it just shows how fucked up they are. They want to take advantage. They want to see people hurt. They want to do things when people aren't aware of them happening. And, and that just shows, again, how sick and twisted these guys really are, man. It's just sickening. If they are what they purport to be, that is a huge piece. And first of all, why are you fucking bitches with your son, dude? Like, why are you having a party fucking on women and doing drugs and shit with your son? Even if this was all consensual, do doesn't anybody find that a little weird, a little creepy? And didn't Diddy and, and his son Christian share a girlfriend? Didn't Lori Harvey date Christian Combs and then start dating Diddy? Like, that's fucking foul, bro. You want to share the same fucking girl as your dad is having sex with, dude? That is sick. And again, this isn't even accusations. This is fact. Like, Lori Harvey was with these dudes. That's why I believe that all these women in the Diddy team as well, all these women who were with these guys are just as evil. And let's not forget, too, 99% of these guys who have these trafficking rings and stuff, they would never get as far as they got without women. So, you know, Jeffrey Epstein used women to recruit other girls. They all use women to recruit other girls. So I would not be surprised if all these little models, which I see as sex workers, listen, if you're famous for posting your body online, showing a picture of you laying down with your fucking legs open in a bikini, you're a sex worker. You're not an influencer. You're not a model. You're not a fuck. You're nothing. You're a sex worker. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but own up to it. You're showing pictures of your feet and ass and tits on fucking Instagram and you think you got a brain all of a sudden. You don't. Okay. You're a fucking sex worker. And that's, that's what it is. So I'm sick of these fucking women on Instagram acting like they, you know, I'm a businesswoman. I'm a strong, no, you're not. You're not. If you're a fucking model, I'm a chef because I just made Chef Boyardee in the fucking kitchen. I just made craft dinner. I'm a chef now. No, I'm not. I'm making a fucking shitty microwave meal. You get what I'm saying, Brody? Of evidence. And remember, when we're talking a civil case, when we're talking lawsuits, the burden of proof is much lower than a criminal case. It's just preponderance of the evidence more likely than not that this happened so the civil suit accuses christian of assault battery sexual assault and intentional infliction of emotional distress there are a big part of this lawsuit she goes into the, the mental anguish that she has gone through the emotional harm that she has suffered as a result of that it's important in order to prove damages and by the way she is uh, claiming unspecified damages so she hasn't put a number amount on it but Diddy, let's go back to him, he is also named as a defendant. He is accused of aiding and abetting Christian's behavior, as well as having premises liability because he was the leaseholder of the yacht. Now, 
Now, premises liability means that you have a duty to keep people on your property safe from injuries. We actually saw a lot of that same kind of theory in the Jones lawsuit. When That's actually a really good like law, by the way, too, because look, somebody could be paying the bills for a house. Like you could have a massive house. And it, it actually stuns me that this wasn't applied to a guy like Les Wexner, who, you know, was involved in the Jeffrey Epstein case. Les Wexner was the guy who provided Jeffrey Epstein with these massive sprawling mansions, these sprawling estates with, you know, hundreds of acres, thousands of acres of property to commit these horrible sex acts and crimes. And Les Wexner just got off because they say, hey, he wasn't there. He wasn't involved. But again, you own the property. You're responsible for what's happening on the premises. That's a really nice law, actually, because, you know, why, why should you be able to should I be able to use this apartment for a fucking trafficking ring and then say, well, I, I didn't know anything. My name's on the lease, but I didn't know. That's fucking bullshit. Unless you can really prove that the person didn't know. He's talking about this shooting that happened at Chalice Studios and the owners and occupiers of that studio should just be as responsible as the people who allegedly engaged in that shooting that he was uh, present for. Now, by the way, not sure if these new allegations could play a role in a future federal criminal prosecution of Combs. We're talking so much about the investigation into them. It could be that this is just an isolated incident here and could not be part of a sex trafficking charge. Although I do wonder if this Christian Combs incident or alleged incident could be part of a potential RICO or racketeering charge. As That's exactly what I was just thinking, guys. This is starting to look like one of those situations that is multi-layered enough to probably be Rico. Um, now, for anybody who's, because I know there's a lot of people from, you know, across the world, not in America, uh, and, you know, there's, they don't have Rico in other countries, I don't think. It's a U.S. thing. So, Racketeer Influenced and Corrupt Organizations Act. So, basically, this is an act that if you're doing organized crime of any kind, which includes, you know, a trafficking ring or, or any sort of, you know, situation like that, this is the statute that's going to bring you down. This also applies to criminal gangs, you know, the mafia, the mob. This was, of course, the statute that brought down the mob in New York City uh, when it was first brought through in 1970. And it's also the act that has Young Thug behind bars now as we speak. Uh, so, you know, this is the situation that we're probably looking at because this is organized. You know, again, people have brought this up in the chat and we've talked about this on other streams as well. This isn't just a Diddy thing. You know, Diddy is the face of an organization. You know, when you see the president and people say, you know, I hate the president or I love the president. You can hate or love the president, but the president is just the face of the operation. There's many, there's many, many other. I just the microphone. Okay, we're back. We're back. There's many, many other people involved in that party, not just the guy who's the face of it. So we see all these pictures of just Diddy. This is not just a Diddy thing. So Rico definitely probably on the table for this. I would not be surprised. Um, not at all. As I mentioned on a previous sidebar, when I laid out potential charges that Diddy could face, if we are talking about conspiracy to violate the RICO statute, RICO organized crime, that's what I'm talking about here, that there hey, was Sevd. a criminal enterprise, to prove that, you would need to show that there was an agreement to break the law, there was an agreement to have this criminal enterprise, and that there were steps or overt acts that were taken in furtherance of that criminal enterprise. Overt acts don't even have to be crimes. They could just be events. They could be things that happen. So could this be an example of an overt act? Could this be an overt act to further this enterprise of illegal sex and power? Could be a stretch. Yes, just something that came to my mind. Now, Miss O'Markey, her attorney, Tyrone Blackburn, said after this lawsuit was filed, quote, like father, like son. It gives us no joy or pleasure in filing this suit against Christian Cohen. Like father, like son is crazy. Who has clearly adopted his father's pattern and practice of depravity. So far, there has been no response from Christian or his attorney at the time of this lawsuit. But 
A little side note about Tyrone Blackburn, the attorney representing Ms. O'Markey and Mr. Jones. United States District Court Judge for the Southern District of New York, Denise Cote, had some very harsh words for Mr. Blackburn and has even submitted a referral to the New York Federal Court Grievance Committee claiming issues with Blackburn in five cases. Whoa. In her order, she writes, quote, Significant resources have been spent by judges of the court and defendants named in actions he has filed to address glaring deficiencies in his filings. A referral to this court's grievance committee is warranted. Judge Cote goes on to write, quote, A reasonable inference from Blackburn's pattern of behavior is that he improperly files cases in federal court to garner media attention, embarrass defendants with salacious allegations, and pressure defendants to settle quickly. Well, I don't know about that. Listen, I don't know about any of that shit. This is not lawyer fucking beef and stuff. But look, at the end of the day, man, I do know that this situation is about to get super duper messy, man. Uh, Diddy is in a lot of trouble. I've always had a bad feeling about his sons, too. Guys, I can't lie. This dude is shady as fuck. I, 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 you know, I hate to judge a book by its cover, but you take a look at this dude. He's just shady, just like his dad, man. He really does seem just like his dad. The fact that they're sharing women, they're getting fucked up together. It's just kind of sick. You know, I don't like the idea. Like, I would never be doing coke and doing drugs and getting fucked up with my dad, passing women around with my dad. Like, that is just bizarre. And it, it's wrong. You know, I, I do think it's kind of wrong. I understand, you know, again, I understand wanting to party, wanting to have fun. You're young, rich, you're lit. That's cool, but I don't know why it has to involve hurting other people or taking advantage of other people. Uh, when you're in such a position of privilege and such an, you know, a position of abundance, uh, I really don't know why you would try to take your blessings, take everything that's been afforded to you, and use it to harm and hurt other people for your own benefit. Um, there's so there's just so many better things you could be doing with all the opportunity that you've been afforded, and if this is true. I really do hope they put these guys under the jail. Uh, it almost seems like a time of reckoning for these entertainment people. Like these past, you know, five, 10 years, there's been like a reckoning. The people who've been doing bad, it's like they say, bro, what's done in the dark will be brought to the light. People think it's a fucking joke. You're only going to get away with it for so long. So if I was a guy in the hip hop space or in the music space period who was doing bad shit, I would be putting it to an end now. I would be starting to wrap it up now because your ass is going to get locked the fuck up uh, and you're going to get exposed for what you've done. We have one more clip here to wrap up the stream and this is 50 Cent speaking on Diddy. <laughs> this made me laugh so hard, bro. This was, this was actually incredible to see 50 Cent uh, speak it on this. So uh, 50 came out, I think, last night at the Dreamville concert. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, Dreamville Fest last night. And I think he was talking as, I don't know who he was talking to, but he said, I love you, my brother. No Diddy. I love you, my brother. No P. Diddy. <laughs> yeah, I love you. Yeah. Even if you're a sex worker. <laughs> yeah, I love you. <laughs> I love you even if you're a sex worker. Like, bro, what? You know, they say 50 doesn't drink. Doesn't it seem like 50 had a little buzz going in this video? Like, I love you, my brother. No P. Diddy. <laughs> yeah, I love you. Yeah. Even if you're a sex worker. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My man 50 just going straight for the neck, bro. It must feel so good to be as right as 50 Cent has been, by the way. This dude has been saying things about Diddy for decades and he's finally been vindicated he must be so happy at the fact that he's been right this whole fucking time it totally is crazy when you have that much power in the game bro um all right man let's let's let, i got one more clip here and then we're gonna wrap it up this is kodak black uh so kodak black was speaking on his drug addiction and I guess he he's saying that he has overcome most of his addic addiction. Uh, so let's see what Kodak has to say. If I can even understand him, guys, to be completely frank, because usually I can't understand a word this guy says. Uh, I speak English, so I, I usually can't understand Kodak Black. But uh, 
Let's see if let's see if we can understand him today. What I was saying. I was saying I love her. Yeah, yeah, I can't. I I don't understand. I, I, if you know me, bro, you know I don't even like perks or pussy. I never did the type of shit to be pressed for pussy. But I remember a point in my life when I was chewing a lot of perks. I'm proud of myself. I've never been as happy in my life, bro. I don't know what it's up came from. What the fuck going on? I ain't even huh? say I'm anti perk. Like I never took a perk since I've been home. But bro, my dose is so low that I can't believe it myself. Man, I'm telling y'all, bro. Before I just went to chill, bro. Bro, I was taking, bro. I can talk about this because it's my testimony, bro. And I'm hollering at y'all. Ain't no shame in my sh Man, bro. I was taking, bro. Bro, at least 100 perks. But my average was 40 perks, says, bro. I'm telling y'all this, bro. But I ain't no. To the point I look at this shit and I be like, bro, what the f was wrong with me, bro? I listen to my music and be like, bro, what the f, fam? By the look of him in this. You know, like, by the looks of him in this video, I think he's announcing that he's down to 15 perks a day. Definitely doesn't appear to be sober. Uh, like, I'm gaining nothing from this announcement right now. Thank you, love. Yeah, y'all could. Come here. Thank you. Oh, that's pretty chill. He ends the video to take a picture. Okay, that's cool. Well, look, man, I'm just busting balls. But at the end of the day, look, I hope Kodak is sober. Um, you know, I wish everybody, I don't wish addiction on anybody, bro. I'm just busting balls, but, uh, he definitely doesn't appear to be sane. Uh, he doesn't appear to be in his right mind. So we're going to see what happens with Kodak. I remember the, one of the last updates was that he was smoking meth and stuff. So look, jokes aside, I wish him all the best. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments about everything we spoke on today. We spoke on Kendrick versus Cole. We spoke on Drake being involved. We spoke on uh, P. Diddy and his son, 50 Cent, and of course, uh, Kodak Black. Really excited for the next step in uh, this beef, dude. I want to see if Kendrick responds. I want to see if Drizzy has something to say. Uh, let me know what you guys think down below in the comments and make sure you click that subscribe button if you've enjoyed this stream so far We're gonna be streaming all the time every day. We're back to our daily stuff now that I'm back in the country So we're gonna keep kicking some ass man. So I love you guys. Take care. We'll chat soon